Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome back uh, to another Materials for the Arts third Thursday artist interview. We're excited tonight to be joined by musician Louis Miranda. What's going on, Louis? Hey, how are you? Happy Doing all right. Doing all right. It's like to have you here um, and to, to chat, like, uh, you know, just to talk about some of your inspirations and some of your motivations in, in, in the, the music that you make and the instruments you make, but also just maybe uh, to check out some of the, the things that you've got around that you've made um, using yeah. found materials. Um, well, <clears throat> yeah. I have so. an array of stuff laying around me. It's, uh, uh, I've tried uh, organizing my thoughts many times and tried to uh, uh, stick to a script, but it never happens for me. Um, <laughs> even when I'm doing performances uh, uh, with the band, uh, they, they were always on guard. They wouldn't know what I was planning. To. I had no plan <laughs> making it up. I had a, a general uh, repertoire of ideas which I would pull in depending upon uh, what the energy was react, uh, what the audience was reacting to. Mm. So I really, uh, my uh, concerts, whenever I, or performances, whatever I do, um, it's basically uh, dependent upon the, the reaction and the energy that, and my observation of the audience. This is different completely. Mm. We're not seeing anybody, but I, I hope that, uh, that I, you know, I get across basically. I, um, I, I did want to start early on from when I became interested in sounds. Basically, my whole thing, my whole life before I even started to play guitar, before I even started to consider taking lessons, was really being uh, attracted to, uh, 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 was as a result of uh, sounds. I love when I go to the movies, the stereo effects more, more than the movies sometimes, you know, I love the sound. I like, you know, if growing up in Puerto Rico, uh, we had zinc roofs, metal roofs. So when it rained, it was like uh, so, so relaxing for me and such a beautiful thing. And of course I lived near the beach. So the combination of the waves and the rain coming down and the palm trees, uh, trees swaying back and forth and people rushing about, all those sounds have always uh, uh, played a huge role in um, uh, developing what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be as I uh, entered the world of music. Um, so I'd like to start right there, actually. Uh, I, when I, I, you know, being born in Puerto Rico, came here at six months, uh, went back, when I was like nine years old and that it was transformational for me in terms of music. Um, we lived near the beach that immediately, and it, uh, I gravitated to that, the sounds of the waves crashing on, on the uh, rocks. So I would walk down to the beach in the mornings and I would uh, stand, we, it, it wasn't really a beach, it, they were just mostly rocks, all this erosion and, and stuff being washed up on shore. Uh, we, I lived in Ponce, which was next to uh, uh, one of the piers, one of the major uh, importing uh, areas. And uh, a lot of things uh, would fall off the boat, whether they threw them off or whatever. A lot of crates would smash against the, the rocks and break. And I would look around and I would spend hours watching the waves come in and go out. The waves would come in and as they went out, there were all these crabs running around. And I would listen to the sound because they did make a sound clear, like a clickety clackety clackety mm -hmm. thing. Uh, if they slipped, you could hear them scraping off a rock and trying to climb back up again. It was really interesting. And then of course the waves would come back in and they'd go out and there would be nothing. <laughs> the whole the way, all the crabs would be gone. Back in, back out, all the crabs were there scurrying again. So it was really interesting. <laughs> so um, awesome. I would go around uh, looking for objects that made sounds. And uh, eventually uh, I started a collection of wooden boxes, uh, pieces of metal, um, uh, uh, 
glass bottles that had broken and were now really, really smooth that you could scrape together mm -hmm. and get sound. I was attracted to a lot of the colors. Um, so I started experimenting with putting things in cans and rolling them around, putting the water in a can, rolling that around, putting sand. There was a lot of sand and mm -hmm. trying to do different things. And then, uh, so I took all these ideas and um, I got it. And this was like when you were a kid. This is like when I was a kid. kid. I was about nine years old. I was about <laughs> nine years old. And um, so I went around some of my school friends and other kids that lived in the neighborhood. And uh, we would sit on somebody's porch or right at the, uh, the porches here, stairs going down. We would all congregate there. And nobody really uh, would mind because um, it, it was like so all these kids coming together it started out with maybe three kids, somebody banging on a bottle and hey, hey why don't you put something and shake in the bottle and shake it. Of course, there were lots of seashells and kids started tying the, some of the seashells had holes in them. So we started tying them together and just going like this and, and um, uh, trying to find different sounds. So eventually we started to come up with different rhythms with boxes and that sort of thing. Uh, before we played anything that was like really organized, it was mostly just chaos. So I would be the conductor in the first and I'd be and just instinctively, I would tell her, and I still do this, where I would go, everybody play and everybody would make a sound, everybody stop and everybody would stop right on cue. Then I started, you know, counting uh, like one, two, three, four, and everybody would, you know, drum, 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 just playing the same thing. There was no, nothing was, uh, 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 broken up or anything so uh eventually th there's this one rhythm that everybody knows the conga line rhythm and i've been hearing that since i was a mm. kid and i think it's like built into everybody's system and you go bum 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 so it's kind of like if, if i you know that might have been one of the early beginnings of of uh of um trying to create rhythmic patterns. So everybody, of course, like, dun, 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 we would make con conga lines and do that same thing. Then um, I came up with the idea of maybe, do, which I still do today uh, during the classes at, uh, when I'm doing the uh, instrument making workshops and materials for the arts, each table, I would have one table, one, two, three, and four go, bum, 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 and they each, have different uh, things that they would go out into the warehouse and and, and get, and each one produced a different uh, qual uh, quality sound. Then I would uh, pick one person from each uh, table and have them do the same thing. It could be and whatever it was that they were holding. So that was something that I integrate into the classes now, which comes directly from when I was a, a little kid uh, wow. growing up in Puerto Rico. So um, then I started, uh, we, we started to exchange different rhythms uh, where I learned the merengue rhythm. And we all started, one kid would do like a clave, just uh, do something, uh, just going like this. One, two, three, one, two, three. And these are, uh, this is just, if you, I'll take it to show you, these are just some um, mm. nuts and bolts that I found in uh, somewhere, I have no clue. Sometimes I have stuff that I do bring from materials for the arts. This was, this is one for materials for the arts from the uh, uh, hardware, mm. see? Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things, this, for example, you could use as a guida, like the, Um, so yeah, so uh, I look for different types of textures and that sort of thing. Uh, like for example, here's a piece of styrofoam. Styrofoam is a great uh, resonator. You can hear how loud it is. Um, oh. It's non-porous, so and it, I, I could touch it over here and I hear it here at this end very clearly. And sound travels really well through this, and it's very very light. Um, so this, I'll, I'll take something like this and maybe do it. So yeah, you don't even have to rub two of them together. 
but uh, that might be a grating sound. But this, this um, uh, in an acoustic environment, even if I'm playing with the band, this sounds really loud. If I go up to the microphone and I'm doing, and the drum is going boom, boom. So there's a lot you can nice. do with styrofoam. Nice. But styrofoam really uh, serves serves as a real uh, amplifies uh, things. Now what I'll show you in a moment what I mean by that. Um, I found these objects here, these three nuts and bolts, and I, I figured out that I, you know, you can get different uh, a sound like this. But each one of these, I'm kind of restricting the tonal properties of this uh, bolt here because I'm holding on to it. So if I want to find out what the tonal properties are of this uh, or the qualities, yeah, I'll go like this. See, I'll throw it up in the air and bring it at the bottom. And that tells me. See, now I know what this is going to sound like. And I've got this one. Slightly different. And let me see what this one sounds like. Wow. Different. Now, I can. And that's because they're vibrating. They're allowed to vibrate more? Yeah, I'm not restricting the, the, uh, the vibration. You see, if I do, see it. Hmm. See, if I go, it's the less pressure I put on it or the less impact I have on the object. Uh, see, if I release it completely from my hold, it sounds better, but this uh, styrofoam really serves mm. to amplify things. Um, and they've been trying to get rid of styrofoam, but now they're uh, putting styrofoam on cellos for the for the top because it amplifies the the pure and natural sound. So they make now they're making um, for several years now. Uh, cello tops to put on top of the wood and it amplifies really really beautifully um yeah. well you know i i just gonna say yeah i just i love just seeing you like you know picking up the bolts or picking <laughs> up the styrofoam because it's so empowering it's like i mean that's to me what's so exciting about materials for the arts is this idea of like you know there's all these reused supplies like you can take, you know, you know, maybe something they would use for a cello, but we could just find it from leftover packaging and like right, make right. things kind of, I mean, like literally like the story you were telling, but, you know, to give right. people ideas and um, yeah, I don't know if you I knew it. I, I was just going to say it's, it's, um, was it, it's called, it's New York Music Month this month from the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment. So, I mean, I feel like this is like just a shout out in general for people to like, you know, get a, get get creative with some making your own music, right? Why not? Oh yeah, if you're working with with children, even adults, you know, um, this is a great thing. It's kind of like a, a communal thing. You know, you get everybody together, and and we've done that in materials for the arts, where we when we're doing the classes, where we have the teachers sit around, and uh, uh, we'll pass the the main principal object around so everybody gets it we'll we'll all hold the rhythm together whatever that rhythm is and then the improvisational part of it gets passed around people just get a chance to experiment and you know we create a safe environment right so that yeah. nobody feels inhibited or or you know that sort of thing so yeah it's it's uh, it's an amazing mm -hmm. thing for me i've always gravitated to sound before i did to notes it's almost like Really, if you put feeling into an object, you breathe new life into it, you give it a new identity when you pick it up, you know? Even this, a uh, hmm. whole new purpose, and all you need to do is explore it, and you'll find it. Uh, I'm going to take these two, uh, these three bolts. Let me see if I'm gonna turn this down here a little bit right. like that so you can see what I'm doing. Can you see that clearly there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I wanna 
I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these across the like here. I put one there. I put the other one there. And one over here. Uh, well, that's the shortest one. I better put that one there. And I'll put this one here. Bring this in a little bit like that. And then um, let me see. All right. I want to see if I have a, all right, I don't have a metal thing here. Oh, yeah. Let me, I'm going to look back here. I found something. Hmm. <laughs> if this doesn't work. I'll try something else. Uh, I have a little mallet here. The thing is that this has a, this little mallet has a little rubber. Oh, there it goes. Maybe not there. See, just these three, you've already created a little melody. And you just, you, it could be, if I take the, if I take old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Or I'm going to now do that same rhythm, but with these. You see? Then you, get, or I could do twinkle, simple, simple extract a rhythm for, from songs that you know. That was like the rhythm extracted from a simple uh, early childhood song. But um, you can think of a lot of different songs. And the more that you could extract a rhythm for, Raindrops, an old song, I'm from a really uh, old song. Rain. You see, and somebody go, and if you want to play some jazz, you go. Ooh, let me see that. Maybe that'll work. Who knows? Okay, now let's see. I'm going to do something else. Does this remind you of anything? Let me see if this does. No, that won't work. Mm, let me see. I'm gonna just isolate this one here. I need to find a metal. Oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take these two. Let's see if this works. Maybe this one works better. Let me see. Let's see. That's cool. Almost. Old school telephone. Click, click. Who's there? All right. Hello. Who's there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. So that's just one thing, but uh, just, to, oh, let's see. I'm going to just stick this thing in so here. So that, that styrofoam is amplifying it, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there we go. So we got that going on there. Yeah, the styrofoam works well. I'll show you in a moment uh, uh, a couple of us. So I'm just going to, let me see. Right, what did I do? That's kind of cool. Dude. Anyway, so just just uh, giving you an idea of how you can experiment with this stuff. This has a nice sound. Yeah, if I do this, if I whack this thing like this, and I spin it around, it creates a certain, uh, it's, it's really nice. So this is something good that I, another material for the arts object there. But let me show you. Um, yeah. <laughs> Starting to move on to styrofoam and rubber bands and wine corks. <laughs> mm. And uh, reminds me of the beach. Uh, now, I did this one. All I did was I put a bunch of rubber bands there um, across like that. Uh, these are now everything I'm talking are just ideas. You could fly with these ideas. Um, so we're talking here rubber bands, corks, and a piece of styrofoam. Uh, I don't know what this is, but there it is, whatever it is, it's made out of. Oh, it's probably an 
a wine cork too of some sort. But I, let me see if I tune this properly. Can you hear that? Wow. Right, so you can hear that more or less? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna come in here. When the sun beats down, must the tall upon the roof. You see, so you could you could experiment. under the boardwalk, love yeah, it. Yeah, under the boardwalk, yeah. Um, and uh, you could just by moving the corks here in, in, into different positions, you can alter the pitch. I could do, let's see if you can hear this. Can you hear that? Yeah. So if I do this, I move the cork here. Much higher. Oh, that one flew off. Okay. Yeah, if I wanted to keep these, I, the cork works the best. I didn't have another cork, but there you mm -hmm. have that. So that's that's just an idea that you could fly with. And we experimented with, with these. When we were kids, we would put up, uh, we found this, well, when I was a kid, I found this guy who said he had a, a base that he wanted to share with us. And what it was, was a upside down tub. And maybe you've seen that, John, where people put a stick through the tub and a, and a, the, a close uh, line attached mm -hmm. to the thing, play it and you pull on it and you bend it. And it was a boom. no notes. It was all about the feel. So, go, so uh, when you hit it, it gives you that bottom, but uh, the notes might be wrong, but you're always fishing for the notes anyway, by pulling the, the stick mm -hmm. back. Kind of something like this. Um, I'm going to switch to this uh, styrofoam here. This one might work better. I just threw the styrofoam and I realized that it sounds like um, bamboo. Hmm. It sounds like bamboo. It's interesting. I'm going to break this and the Hear that? Hmm. It almost sounds like bamboo. But anyway, uh, if I throw a whole bunch of them together, like it has like that hollow, yeah, that wooden yeah. quality of like two bamboo yeah. staffs striking or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm into. Anyway, here's another take on uh, on. Um, the whole is that a back scratcher? Yeah, this is a back scratcher that I have. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Um, this is just stuff that I find around. So I just just for the class, I wanted to. I mean, for the presentation. Um, yeah, if I could remove this string from here, let me see. It's got a string so I could hang it up. But I, I just took this back scratcher to so that I could make a musical instrument out of it. You see, right cool. here. Oh, uh, here's the bridge over here, and I need that elevation so that I could press. I can't really hear it unless I put it here. See, I'm, I have it on the uh, styrofoam right there. What I did was over here, I'm I'm uh, pressing over here. Let me see if I can get a good angle so you can see. See, I'm playing here and I'm just making up notes. Mm. All right, so I'm pressing up here. Come you get down dumb. But you could just have fun like we've we've done this particular uh 
project in schools with kids where we would have them get, oh, here we go. I hope I don't fall off of here. I got so much stuff here. Uh, a paint stirrer. So you could do the same thing with a paint stirrer. Mm. And I just, that, uh, that's just uh, a, a, a dice over here at the end, hot glued it on. And something that I found in the house, piece of plastic here. And you could wrap the rubber band, band around it. And what the kids did was they decorated this, you know, however they wanted so that they could personalize it, gives them something to do. And then I would uh, have them find a piece of styrofoam. I would bring in styrofoam if I had enough and hand it out in the class. And they loved it. It was also working with cups, paper cups. You could put it on top of a paper cup and the paper cup would be, be the resonator. But what I'm doing here is, and let me see, we've got a black background in the back so you could see that I'm pressing here. And so when I'm pressing on the string over here, it's shortening the distance from here to here. So, mm. and I'm applying the same amount of pressure, but the string is shorter. So it has to process all that energy. So at a faster rate, so you get a faster vibration. Mm -hmm. So the pitch gets higher, the faster the vibration, the frequency, uh, the pitch gets higher. And that's the principle for music. Uh, if you squeeze uh, air through a, a smaller hole, you're gonna get a higher pitch. Mm. Uh, the hole is bigger, it's gonna get lower the sound. But yeah, you can experiment or you could just have fun and go, Whatever. Whatever, you know, kids might enjoy that. I keep talking about kids because I do a lot of work, as you know, with uh, uh, early childhood and kindergarten, that sort of thing. But uh, it works and it, it also, um, it's science, the science of, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, music and that sort of thing. Um, I want to show you some other things. Uh, this one is, uh, let, me see, I was, let me see where did I put that. Oh, this, uh, this is just something that you might have in your house. <clears throat> it's a uh, lampshade. <laughs> lampshade. And um, so it has uh, uh, some nylon hmm. strings, like the car strings, materials for the arts got like thousands of guitar strings, which I, I have put aside. Uh, and I'm always to give to the teachers when we were doing the uh, instrument work, work, uh, making workshops. So uh, strings are attached like this, but it becomes like a talking drum. So it's, if I squeeze it in this way, I don't know if you could see the strings become very loose, you see that? Mm -hmm. But if I go the other way and I apply pressure here, I'm stretching the strings. Let me see. Mm. Yeah, I'm stretching. See? It almost sounds like an expression. Like it could be, that's sympathetic. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. You see, you could, or you could do, you could do, you can go, oh no. Like that was what? Like surprised. You know, that sort of thing. But then I, I today I went like this, let me see. Sounds like a swarm of flies. I, I had Why Did the Bumblebee Going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's interesting to me. I, I, I could spend the longest time just wasting time <laughs> just doing that. Um, yeah, so that's another thing, stretching strings. You know, I just want to share some of the other. It, it, uh, it's visually just beautiful to the simplicity of it, though. You know, like right? just these white yeah. two blocks with these simple b bars on it or this lampshade yeah. with this simple, you know, very simple and, and utilitarian. And it's just about sound. I'm always looking. Last, last night I had a can of um, uh, 
some grapefruit, LaCroix, whatever it is, seltzer. And I, I said, let me see if this works. So that's the thing right there. So I could see myself playing that, having somebody going, uh-huh. Uh, let me see. Dun, 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 dun. Of course, I would have to work on my rhythm. Um, yeah, so there you have it. You know, let me see what uh, I have so much stuff here. Oh. Okay, so here's uh, a little, oh, I don't, this is, I don't know what this is. You know what? Let me show you this before I show you this. Um, and it's uh, this, all, all this stuff, when I bring it into, uh, we're, we're doing the uh, music classes at MFTA or going into uh, uh, to do a demonstration at a school. Uh, all these objects, you know, it, it, like kids, or even when I was doing the concerts, like uh, I would play it at a lot of like children's museums um, in different states, like the, the largest museum, children's museum is in uh, Indianapolis. The children's museum there is huge. And um, I would do these shows and people were all, all started looking at things differently, but it doesn't just impact on, on this. It, it, I think it just goes beyond that because it kind of like opens up, oh, let me, here's something else that has nothing to do with music. How could I look at that object differently? Hmm. I noticed years ago uh, seeing um, uh, a broken down wagon somewhere, just uh, uh, it, it looked really cool out in the field, you know? Mm -hmm. where you would probably say, oh, that we got to get rid of that thing. But then uh, you go into a fancy restaurant and you might see that wheel, that wagon <clears> wheel <throat> hanging up in the ceiling. So a lot of times, you know, artists by take, uh, about taking something that exists already and, and, and giving it, maybe giving it a new identity in order to breathe new life into it, which is what we do at Materials for the Arts. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Now this is a, a shipping, let me see. This is a, some kind of a shipping thing, oh. but yeah, you could, I guess something goes in there huh. and you know, they put, they wrap it up. And so I took everything off and I would say, okay, this has really cool sounds. It's three sections. It's this section over here and this section over here. Hmm. I guess whatever went in here was shipped out. It's got a little metal thing there at the end. So by me, now this oh. is something I just found out just now doing as I'm showing you. I, I knew there was a metal thing, but I ne it never occurred to me. Let me see. See, I'm covering the, the hole over here and it doesn't do anything. But when I don't cover the hole, let me see if I can play something. It but it gives you different pictures. See. See, that's cool. But what I do with the other part, I, think I wanted to show you the other. Oh, no. All right, I got to find that because I have to show you. Hmm? Oh, he. Right in front of me, right there. <laughs> so I'm going to cover this now, but that was interesting. That I, I really found yeah. that. Let me see what happens when I do this. When I oh, listen to that. Oh. This I knew about. This I knew about. See. Now, if I do it over here, different sound. Hmm. If I would think, if I were in a big orchestra, we just want you to do. You know what I'm saying? Or you yeah. can do. 
You can work out all kinds. Everything requires some kind of technique. You just have to figure out what that technique is. Um, so if I go like this, let's say I'm going to hit it over here. I go. Um, mm. Yeah. So yeah. So you've got this sound, which I like. Oh yeah. So if I go like this, that way. Make up a song. <laughs> but yeah, so you can find a lot of inspiration by just uh, messing around with this stuff. Uh, let's see what else I have. Well, I, I love it because you really are like experimenting with it and just like kind of literally just experimenting, you know, hearing new sounds, finding sounds, yeah. turning yeah. the object around. Now, this is the one I showed you earlier. Um, which was this, which is something I found at the warehouse. Mm. Right? Um, but you might find something like this laying around, so maybe a name. I have a huge collection of stuff. I don't know where some of the stuff came from. Um, all I know is that I have a lot of uh, stuff most people will consider junk. But I put these beads in, and we, we, we had a whole bunch of them, the materials for the art. The, the static, is, they're holding onto there. Look, that guy's up there. And yeah. if I go like this, Sounds like a cicadas, maybe. A cicada, and I just realized that's what they sound like, honey. Kind of. But if I watch this, you see, they're all in there and kind of tripping. Oh, yeah, they're still jumping around in there. It's the static. It looks like they're flies or something, some kind of mm. mugging. Look at that. It's tripping, you know? Look at that, they're crawling up, they want to get out. <laughs> Open up and release them into the air. Okay, so I've got that. Let me show you, uh, go back to, uh, boom. And I, love, I love the shape of that bottle. Everything's just this interesting know, shape, but, random see. object. Yeah, let me just, oh, I, I just dropped something. Into, I mean, even this becomes a, this um, trash can can become, See, it has a great sound. Mm. Uh, so always looking for different sounds on the side. Well, I wonder if I use this thing here. So yeah, my thing is all about sound, and now I'm going to put these two together. I just uh, paint can, which you might have at your house. I don't. I would figure out a way to put maybe with um, double stick tape. Yeah, if I had these together, and I'd be able to use both my hands. And for me, it's studio quality. If I was uh, going to record and I make something, an instrument out of this, I could probably record with it. Yeah. Yeah, so there goes another instrument. I want to show you this and hopefully get back to the... Uh... And, you know, shakers are easy. It's always fun to make shakers. Um, you can always just fill anything with a... Mm whatever you want, that's fine. But it's fun when you take it and you play it with something else. Uh, and can just, like, like here's a uh, Tupperware. Tupperware is fun. I could do like, I got something in there, so I'm gonna do. So something like this would have been a treasure. At, uh, back when I was a kid. Um, all right, so here's something that everybody might have, a piece of cardboard. 
And if you tear off the top layer, you get this kind of, uh, you get what's underneath the, um, I forget, I don't know, this corrugated type of thing, see? And this, this is kind of cool. I could, if I want to do a helicopter sound. See, that sounds like a helicopter. I, I could make this really long and just go. Or a motorcycle. You know, it's kind of cool. There's a song I do, I have a little frog, and his name is Miguelito, and I put him in the bathtub to give him a bañito while he drank up all the water, and he ate up all the soap, and then he burped all night from bubbles in his throat. So we make ribbit boards with the kids. We take this off, show the kids, hey, let's make an instrument. And they spend some time peeling it, they're going like that. And peeling the whole this takes forever. <laughs> We're gonna have to this one. You see, you peel it, uh, cut it off into little squares, uh, glue it onto a flat piece, and we do the song. They learn the song, they write it out. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can find this. Well, I, thing. I love how that, that playful spirit, like out of cardboard. I'm sorry? That's the inside of the cardboard right there. Yeah, the inside of the of the cardboard makes a sound. Um, that's that's all it is, you know. Um, uh, we found this in materials for the other. Was that Joyce's card? Yeah, it's cor corrugated, right? Yeah, this we f we f uh, we found mm. right. Same thing, but if you don't have this, I like the sound. So. That sounds like a helicopter too here. That's cool. Yeah. Um, oh, I wanted to show you. Oh, so I was experimenting with pine cones today. I went outside. I don't know if you can hear this. Pine cones. Now I noticed that the pine cones are heavy, uh, start to thin out at the bottom. You see? And I was just, oh, let me see if that makes a sound. Let me see if I went. It does. Yeah, let me try this one. Oh, that one's that one's dying. Um, you have to come up with a technique. But if I did enough of these and put them all together, if I were to record this and layer them, it would sound either like water. It would sound yeah, like that on the styrofoam. I don't know that I if I place this on the styrofoam, it will impact on it because I have to hold it. I don't know. Let me see. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's a. It probably doesn't translate there, but up here and. Uh, with me, I hear all the, uh, I, I hear water, blah, 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 blah. I hear um, some kind of a bug. Um, so here's another thing. This is a balloon and a cup of uh, uh, some green drink, I don't know. But, so that makes it, uh, if you bounce a little ball on it. <laughs> kind of a fun game, see. But <laughs> that's that's a balloon stretched on there. It's a twelve-inch balloon I put on there, and that's just uh, like a, maybe like a Starbucks cup if you have one. But you could. And um, I don't know if uh, this might inhibit it a little bit. Ooh. It's for me, it's going boom, boom, ba, boom. boom. So it's kind of cool. Um, we've done this in, in school, <laughs> and the kids love them. They all go like, we all march somewhere together, but that's fun. Um, yeah, That's beautiful. This, yeah. yeah. So what I did here with whatever this was, this is just a, this was, must have been another. This one, 
I had turned it into a drum, but the rubber band broke. Mm. Um, so mm. I just uh, glued a piece of um, sandpaper there. See? Mm. So sort of playing. And simple rhythms, doesn't have to be anything complicated. I could probably hold these two, get, these two together. Let me see if it works. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that works. Um, it's all about rhythm, some, some uh, string stuff. Let me scratch my eye for a minute. There we go. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. The one thing that I don't have is that if you find little bottles of, uh, like, let's say, vanilla extract and um, almond extract, whatever, those little bottles, uh, and you put different levels of water, you can have pitch, you know, which is something I always, and it's a fun science experiment too. Um, let's see. Uh, so, yeah. Let me see if there's something I, else I wanted to show. I wanted to show you uh, this thing here on the styrofoam. This is something that I found. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Okay. Um, oh, these things are great. Folks, too. we do have a chat here. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, add them to the chat and uh, we'll see if we can get some answers here for some of your musical instrument making uh, questions. Yeah, so what uh, this is a, a coffee thing or a water thing, same thing. These are easy to find. So they have a different pitch. And this one goes. Huh. It resonate really well. You could probably string them together. Oh. Look what I did here. Just before we started, I made a wind chime. See? And I'm gonna hang this outside. I just used a, a, a top part of a hanger, which I clipped oh. off. I tied these onto the top part of the hanger. And when the wind hits this, I'm gonna probably attach a, a long strip with a piece of cardboard to catch the wind. So when the wind hits that cardboard, it'll go back and forth and swear like this. And we have a collection of wind chimes outside. So we're gonna add this one to it too. And this is all nuts and bolts. And my um, older express bell over here. See right there. Yeah, um, let's do this last thing. Oh, look, if you're outside, and you find a piece of stick that looks like this, you could turn it into something that looks like this. See? Oh, wow. Yeah, this is very cool. It's got it's magical. Little... Yeah, this is really nice. There's a bunch of trinkets there. Kind of some ceremonial thing. Mm. But um, it's also, yeah. I guess, attention in the classroom. Okay, who wants to hold the, uh, the power thing or whatever, you know? But yeah, yeah. Um, so let me just uh, do this last one here, if I could find it. Um, it? Getting some comments, people are saying that uh, they got ideas for their, their class. They, they're excited to use some of these ideas. Um, someone now knows what to do with their list of the old screws. <laughs> so that's right though but that's what this is all about i mean it is about sustainability and reuse like what can you do with things that we have instead of seeing them as disposable how can we use them and you know be inspired by them and find re you know kind of new life in them Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, i'm happy that if, if you if somebody gets something out of this that that's great, you know, um, and that always uh, makes us all feel good. I just want to try this last thing here. Uh, let me see. I'm going to okay. Play. And I've noticed it, it, I the, 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 the sound quality for this is, is okay. if, if you're, I've noticed that if you're, if you're singing along or if you're making a little sound, the quality is even better. It picks it up even better. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Look, let me see. Yeah, this sounds like a Wow. This is probably isn't the best piece of styrofoam, but it's almost like pretend styrofoam. 
you know, there's two different types of styrofoam. The one that's been around forever, and then there's this new stuff that feels more like plastic. And I don't know what styrofoam is made out of. But mm. anyway, so this is something I'm going to experiment. I found that. Anyway, um, yeah, so those are just some ideas I wanted to share in a, in a nutshell of what I do. And of course, uh, I've, I've uh, maybe one day I'll put together a video of a bunch of us uh, playing some rhythmic patterns and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I hope uh, you had fun. I certainly yeah. had fun. And, and thank you. Ben, listen, I, I'm inspired. I, every time, you know, I, I've seen you share different, you know, uh, instruments and things, but every time it's, it's, you know, you're always finding different things and experimenting and it's changing and it's so simple. And I mean, you know, I mean, one question I guess is, you know, for people that say don't necessarily come from a musical background, you know, would you have any really basic advice just on, on how to just say if today they wanted to mess around with how to get started? Well, you know, uh, I, I always say that find the rhythm uh, that's in your body first, you know, and don't mm. worry about notes. Um, it's more about feeling. Just put all the feeling into whatever mm. it is, even if it's rubbing a piece of styrofoam. If you if you do uh, if you're doing this, you know. Um, and you, your body, mm -hmm. you got two legs, you walk like this, one, two, one, two, that rhythm. If you walk at a steady pace, mm -hmm. that translates into music. When you, when you um, breathe in, you breathe out, you go. <sighs> Just forget that feeling. You, you know, you got two uh, nostrils, two eyes, two ears. It's one, two, one, two, which eventually eventually becomes one, two, three, and four. One, two. Yeah, if everybody feels that, you know, when you're walking down the street, you know, if you're thinking about it, you might trip. Uh -huh. so, yeah. But that's it. Find the <laughs> rhythm that's in your body first. Try playing with your body, you know, like go. Like that. Clap your mm -hmm. hands or something. Smash, crash, my goodness, what a bash is the way you begin, you know? Something like that. And just play your uh, arms. Okay, thank you very much, John, for giving me the opportunity and bliss. Thank you, too. And um, I want to thank oh, you. Man, such, such a free. Uh, it's such a free perspective on music. And, um, you know, I hope for people it's made them feel like you know, right away, the music can, and sound can be even look a little more accessible. And we're all sitting around our houses a lot more than ever. So it's a perfect time to experiment and have fun with it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, oh. it shouldn't be, music shouldn't be intimidating anybody because it, it belongs to everyone. Uh, and uh, just pick up something and find the sound there. Start with that, too, you know, and have fun. My friends. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great evening. And folks, join us again uh, for interviews with artists uh, from Materials for the Arts. I'm John Kaiser. This was Louis Miranda. And, and uh, thanks for joining us and have a wonderful evening. Thanks, Louis. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Good night, everyone. <laughs>